welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be going over standard deviation and how, could, how you can use it. I had a little stutter there, but it wasn't there. Anyways, standard deviation. Okay, standard deviation is nothing. It's simply drawing a fib and getting levels on where price can go. Boom, bam. Okay. That's standard deviation. And I'm ending the video here. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, <laughs> that's not all when it comes to standard deviation. Okay. We're going to go over this trade that I took um, today that I'm recording this video, which is uh, September. September 3rd, 2024. From, so from years from now, this is September 3rd, 2024. This is, if you're watching this in 2026 or 2025, or even now, I took this trade today when you're watching this. So we're going to go over it here using standard deviation. While I, I'm explaining the standard deviation. So with standard deviation, right, it's basically the last swing that occurred before price displaces in a certain direction, right? Or the this, the last swing that is used for your setup before pr price displaces into your take profit, okay? Or before price displaces into the direction that you want to go. So, I took this change of state of delivery, right? This order block here with this fair value gap. Hmm? Or with that fair value gap there. I think I took it right here or at the order block. I forgot where I took my entry at, but it was somewhere around there. No, I took this inversion. I took that inversion fair value gap with the change of state of delivery, okay? So, if we draw that inversion... I like this and set it to I for value gap and draw that out. Boom. All right. That's where I took my entry. Okay. So this is where my entry is. Where's the last swing of when I'm taking my entry? When's it when where where is the last swing? Not when, where is the last swing? If you said here, nope. I'm taking my entry over here. This is where my entry occurs. This is where it occurs, right here. Right on there. That's where it occurs. Or, even still, if I was taking this fair value gap here, it may say inversion, but this is not an inversion, so please don't cancel me for this. Even if I was taking this fair value gap, since we're taking cells, we want to see the last swing, which was here. That's the last swing. Because you can't do this. You can't. Nuh-uh. What you gotta do? Last swing. Boom, bam. There's standard deviation, right? Okay. Now you're probably like, what even is standard deviation? You're explaining it, but what even is it, okay? Standard deviation, right, is basically a swing, right? But extensions of the swing to show you where price can go, okay? So you see these extensions here, the, re the red and white, white lines? It may look a little weird to you, but these are what I colored my levels as, okay? And there's the, a max of 10 standard deviations, okay? That's the max, a max of 10. So if you want to copy these, there you go. I'll give you a little minute to copy those or screenshot it. Actually, just screenshot it. It'll be easier for you. If you want to see everything, trend lines off. If you want to see this down here, you can. Go ahead and screenshot that. Okay. So, now we're, we're done. Okay, you got it? Okay, I think you did. You got it, right? So, these levels here, these extensions of that swing that you draw it on, pay attention to where those extensions land. Okay. If it lands on an imbalance, if it lands on an imbalance fill, if it lands at the beginning of an imbalance, if it lands right below a swing low, if it lands on an intermediate low, if it lands on an order block, if it lands on a breaker, basically anything that's like that catches your eye, target that point, okay? Because if we draw back to when it, that swing that I took before price displaced, which is from here to here, I took the the 10th standard deviation, which is right here. If you think I'm capping, let's pull up the Instagram story, because why not? Right here. That's it. That's the, that's the Instagram story. You know, if you want to view it again, there it is. It was 15 RR, and I took the 10th standard deviation on NASDAQ and on Tuesday, 3rd September 2024, whatever. 3rd of September, Tuesday, September 2024. And this is, this, this is the trade right here. So, if you think I was lying about that, you've been proven wrong. And, um, I forgot where this 10th standard deviation lined up at, but I think it lined up with something I completely forgot. Yeah, I'm not sure what it landed up on, but it landed up with something I completely forgot. But, I took the 10th standard deviation because it landed up with something I have no clue where it did. But, I did take the 10th standard deviation. So, wherever it lands on, I think it landed right below a swing blow. But, you see here... Right when we hit the 10th standard deviation, price started meandering around. That's why I say 10th, the 10th standard deviation is the highest standard deviation. 
Because you notice, yeah, I was blowing through all the other standard deviations, but once we got the 10, what happened? Once we got the 10, we just started meandering. Because look, let's extend this out, right? Right here. You see, as soon as price hit it, it just started meandering around. Consolidated. Yeah, it may have started dumping a little bit more during PM, but it still meandered around after the 10th standard deviation was, was gone. Or was, a, uh, I guess you could say, pushed through. So it's nothing hard. It's nothing hard. Not at all. Let's, let's, go, let's switch to gold, for example. Let's go to gold. I do have a little drawings on here. How many do I have? One? Okay. I can take that off. It doesn't really matter. So let's jump to the 15 minute and find like a setup we could took, right? Let's go about right here. Let's jump on a 30 minute, okay? So we have this order block here, pretty big order block. These consecutive up close candles here. And then we have this fair value gap, which is a change of state of delivery, okay? So once price came and hit this fair value gap, we could have been like, okay, take our entry here. Right, have our stop above the order block right there, and then we don't know where our take profit is going to be because we haven't drawn the what we haven't drawn the standard deviation yet. So we can go ahead and set it right there. Right, where's the last swing? Uh, um, let's see. I, th I think it's right here. Right, I, I I think right. Now we see where does it where what does it land up with in the future? What does it land up with? Wow, close right, pretty close. And it comes straight to that. Now, you see this wick here? ICT mentioned something about wicks, huh? Boom, bam, quadrants. Okay? Now we draw that out. See that? Do you see that? Price came close, but didn't do it. You see how the one and a half standard deviation is there? Right below the quadrant of this wick here? He says, treat. Treat large wicks as gaps. That's what he said. Treat large wicks as gaps. Actually, let's see. Did it hit it? Nope, it didn't. You know. But close enough, though. If you would have took one standard deviation. And also, if the swing is abnormally large or, like, pretty large, you can just take one or two standard deviations, okay? Because as you see here, that swing was a pretty large swing. And it only came to, like, the one or close to the one and a half standard deviation. So... Just a little keynote for you. If the swing is small, then yeah, go ahead and see where it lines up at, and you can probably take five or six standard deviations. But as you see there, you only could have took one because the swing was, you know, pretty large or larger than normal. And let's do this here. Let's do this little example because I think I did take a trade here. Yep, it was on Friday. It was a TGIF setup. I did take this trade, okay? So I think it was around here on the 15 minute. I'll try to find it real quick for you. I will try to find it. Let's see, was it here? Oh, yep. Yes, it was. It was here. Right around here. Okay. So, I noticed here. It came close. It was like, I think it was a break of structure here. It was a up, down, up. And then we were in a breaker around here. This is like our breaker right here. This is a breaker. Then we came break of structure. Then we were tracing into OTE levels. Then I took I took this break of structure with this fair value gap. And it was boom. Set it at the top right there. Bam. Now, where's our take profit going to go? Where's that going to go? Where's our target going to go? Uh-oh. Did you forget? Did you forget? Quadrants. Why is that on? There we go. Standard deviation. Yay. Wow, look at that. One standard deviation right below those accumulated lows there. Does it hit it? Yes, it does. See, Let's see the other levels, shall we? 2.5. Look at that. Right there below those equal lows there. Takes it out, right? It does. It takes it out. Even and even this wick here. Remember, like I like I said, or like ICT said, large wicks treat them as gaps. So you go ahead and draw quadrants. Bam. Interesting, right? Very interesting. We see here how's how 1.5 is resting above this quadrant. Yeah, simple. But the one, right? One standard deviation resting below below those lows. Two and a half standard deviations right below these equal lows here. So you could have took both the 2.5 and the one. Took both. And even the four. Because it's right below this low here. So the 2.5, one, and four. You want to see what the RR is? Sure, let's find out. So for one, that would have been three. 3.77 RR, or 
4 RR, 2.5, 7 RR, and 4, 10 RR. Okay? You may, you, may, you may be like, man, this is bullshit. Okay. You can say that. You can say it's bullshit. Do I need to show you again? Yeah, I'll show you again. Why not? I'll show you again. This is real, y'all. The 10th standard deviation is real. Very much so real. It's real. See that? It's real. I post my trades a lot on here. If you want to go through them and see, they're right here. I want to see all the recent trades. I don't think I use standard deviation. Well, I use it here. Because you see how the third standard deviation is resting on the consequent encroachment of, I think it was a Reaper. Yeah, it was the consequent encroachment of a Reaper. But you see how the third standard deviation is resting there. And I have my take profit right there. If you want to watch the trade replay, go ahead and watch it. You can watch it real quick. You know, it won't hurt the video. Just, just watch it. Watch how it uh completely rips through the third standard deviation, and it also goes past this, by the way, because the other standard deviations were resting at some liquidity levels, so it did go past this. And boom. Easy, right? Simple. Just got to learn how to use it. Got to learn how to draw the swings and how to use it. Just back test it a couple times and multiple times, actually. And you'll be fine, right? I think so. I think you'll be fine. But, you know, you just got to do it over time. Everyone knows it. Can't get it first try. Just can't. It's not going to work. But um, that's enough of me yapping. I kind of yapped this entire video. But, you know, at least I still gave you some information about standard deviation and proving some people wrong. Because I've been getting some DMs on certain platforms about, oh, you're a fake trader, unprofitable, oh, you're a 13-year trader, oh, ha, 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 you're trash at trading, <laughs> whatever. Um, I'll be seeing you guys later. This I've been recording for like 12 minutes and 3 seconds I'll, um, in this video here, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.